Hey guys, it's Ashley, long time no see. Um, I haven't done a video on here in about a year, maybe two. Um, so yeah, today I am going to do the chronic illness tag type thing. Um, mainly because I haven't done, you know, a video on here for a while. So hopefully I will continue to, um... But no promises, my illnesses have not been kind to me lately. Um, just quick thing about myself is, first off, yes, I am wearing my Disodonomy Awareness shirt on the back. It actually says, together we stand even after we faint and fall, um, <laughs> which is my life. Um, I am almost 16 years old. I am the youngest on this channel as far as I know of. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna get right into it. Any questions or videos that I should do, please comment down below. Alright, so the questions are on my phone. Um, but yeah. So, the first one is, what illnesses do you have? Um, I might miss some, or some symptoms or stuff, because brain fog. Um, but yeah, I have pods slash dysautonomia. Um, I have visceral hyperalgesia, I have GERD, which is stomach acid reflux, I have asthma, I have amplified pain syndrome, I have hypermobility, um, I have migraines, um, gastroparesis, I have a uh, nerve burning head to toe. And it's also internal, and it's hypersensitive, meaning when anything touches my skin, um, it gets worse, or it's more irritated. Um, cold also bothers it. Um, my left leg is also uh, paralyzed from the knee down. Um, joint pain, you know, stuff like that. I'm not really going to go over every individual symptom I have. Um, and with my POTS, just to let you guys know, I do faint, I do... Uh, pass out around every day, which means go unconscious. Um, it used to be 10 times a day, but I rarely get off of the couch. I'm actually sitting up right now, which I don't do very often. Um, all right, number two is when were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed with POTS. I can remember the exact day on January 22nd. Um, in 2013, I was 12. It was two months before my 13th birthday. Right now, I am 15, almost 16. I'll be 16 in a month. Um, but yeah, visceral hyperalgesia, I was diagnosed, I want to say October of 2013, I want to say. It may have been 14. I can't really remember. Um... GERD, I was diagnosed when I was very young. I was probably around like four. Um, asthma, same thing. Um, hypermobility, same thing. Um, a lot of things I was diagnosed very young. And again, I have a lot of other things. I just can't think of them all. Amplified pain syndrome, I've had for a while, but I was recently diagnosed with it like a year ago, I believe. Um, gastroparesis, probably around 2013. Um, the same, I have a video here with me with a, um, I, it was like a what's in your hospital bag, and I also had a monitor at the time. Um, it's, I go over all that in that video, which is also on this channel. Um, number three is, have you ever been hospitalized? <laughs> actually, yes, I have been. Um, actually, this past summer, summer of 2015, I was admitted for five days in May. I was admitted in, for 11 days in June. I was admitted for 32 days from July 27th to August 28th. And I was admitted for two days in September. <laughs> so, and I've also been admitted, uh, you know, a few other times uh, per, for, in previous years for uh, multiple other things. Um, if you want more of a video on that, comment down below, and I'll do one. Um, but yeah, um, number four is, have you ever had surgery? Uh, yes, I have. I'm not really going to go and do all that, because this would be... I can't see how long the video has been already, but it would be a long video. So, uh, yes, I have. Um, number five is, do you take any prescription meds? This is probably going to shock people. 
back when I had my feeding tube. I had an NJ tube. Um, I recently uh, got it out because my stomach, uh, s something worked, basically. Um, at that point, I was taking over 20 different medications, or maybe 15. I, I, it was not under uh, 13 that I know. So anything around there. I'm sorry, uh, my brain's not really working. Um, some were pills, some were liquid, and I got them like every three hours through my tube. Um, thankfully, my mom was very nice and did that for me. So I was taking a lot of different medications, everything to control my pain as I, I'm still in a lot of it. Um, and everything, but at the moment, I'm off of all POTS medications, which is why my POTS has been worse, because I can no longer take my Midadrine, um, which is for blood pressure, because my blood pressure lately, we don't know why this is, I've done a lot of different tests and everything, my blood pressure, one second is like 189 over 120, and then the next minute it's down to like 70 over 40. Um, which when my blood pressure goes low and my heart rate rises is why I go unconscious, which is still quite often. Um, I'm also taking, um, uh, Tramadol, um, as needed Nexium. Other than that, I'm not taking anything. Uh, like I said, I was on a lot of different medications, but I took the choice to get off of a lot of them because... They were causing a lot of side effects, which were causing other side effects, and I had to take medications to counteract those side effects. And some things were just agonizing one illness just to help another. So I didn't, I, I didn't see how it was fully helping me. So I talked to my doctors, and I decided to stop all, pretty much all of them besides my Nexium and a few others as needed kind of things. Like I was on gabapentin. Um, I was on liquid Ativan, uh, I, uh, I can't think of all of them, they're all in the fridge still though, I'm kind of as needed, um, alright, number six is, uh, what do you wish people knew about living with a chronic illness? Um, I, uh, this is kind of hard that, well, one, I do home hospital teaching. I do not go to school because I am too ill to go to school, which is a real bummer for me because I love seeing my friends. Um, that, And I've been off and on home hospital school since I was in uh, sixth grade, and I'm now in tenth. Um, and my friends used to always say, oh, you're so lucky, you get to stay home. And it's like, that's that's not... How is that good that I'm too sick to do anything to kind of even go out of the house only times I leave the house anymore um, we decided to have my home hospital teaching at a Starbucks actually um, I only do home hospital six hours a week though but that gives me a chance to get out of the house um, but yeah and I can't walk because of my legs so I'm either on crutches and I'm mainly in my wheelchair because you know if I stand for too long or something it is very, very likely I will uh, pass out if I stand more than, like, three minutes. Um, that's just how it is for me. Uh, always has been. Um, Alright, next question. Um, seven, number seven is, what can we do to raise awareness? Uh, the way that I kind of started is, uh, kind of letting people know, doing things like this, um, telling people around you what you have um mainly i do because i go unconscious it scares people and if i let them know what's happening i make them more comfortable around me and i also make them aware that this is something that happens this is something that is real that it's something that could happen to anyone well some of my things are genetic um but you know this is Something like POTS is something anyone could get. Two people in my school actually have POTS. Um, they're both older than me, though, and were recently diagnosed. Um, but yeah. Uh, it, by the way, for my age, I got diagnosed at 12, which is to my doctor quite young because most people, even if they start showing signs, at like 12, they usually don't get diagnosed until like 15. I start showing showing 
original signs at like eight, seven years old. But then when I got, I think when I got 11 years old, or I was either 11 or 12, I started passing out like eight times a day. Um, I couldn't stand up without falling back, either falling down or passing out kind of thing. Okay. Number eight is who knows about your illnesses. This goes to what I just said. Um, pretty much everyone, I'm not, not every everyone, but if people ask me about it, I will tell them straight up. My friends that I meet, um, I tell them about it, especially if I'm hanging out with them because I don't, if I pass out or if they, because I'm in my wheelchair or something, I don't want them to be freaked out or scared of me or frightened. Um, I want to kind of ease them, and if I, you know, hey, I'm like, hey, this this is just how it is, it calms them down. So, and plus it's another way to spread awareness. So, any chance I can get, I try to let people know. Um, however, um, some people take, especially at my age and me letting people know, that I, some people see that as, I want attention. I don't really see how people get that. I mean, sure, in a way, I do want attention because I want people to know about this illness. But I do not want people to go, she's an attention seeker, she's, you know what I mean? Not like that. I don't want it for those reasons. Um, which, I don't even know why people, you know, think that. It's very odd, but I have gotten that in the past. Um, number nine is, how does your illness most significantly affect your life? Um, it affects me from walking, um, it stops me from going to school and seeing my friends, I mean, it stops me from more, more ways than I even fully realize. Um, at the moment, we have tried a lot of different facilities, they won't take me, so the next step is trying to find a pain rehabilitation center outside of uh, my state to hopefully help me walk and get a better quality of life than I have right now. Uh, like I say, I don't really see anyone outside of my family here in the house, um, unless I, like, video chat people. Um, yeah. Number... Ow. Um, number ten is if... Uh, if you could tell the medical community one thing about treating your particular illness or illnesses, what would it be? Okay, this is not necessarily treating my illnesses, but something I have just seen in, I guess you can say, the chronic illness community on the internet. It be Instagram, Facebook, uh, whatever it is. Some people who have certain illnesses, for some strange reason, they think if someone was diagnosed a different way, is getting different treatment, got a different study, but with the same name, or something like that, they automatically think, or if something is just a little bit, maybe not even out of the ordinary, but if their symptoms don't fully match up, they think, oh, they're faking, you know, this is someone who does not really have this illness, and that is not always true, just because someone's treated um, with a different medication or was diagnosed a different way than you were, does not mean that that person is making this up or faking your illness, as some people have said. Not necessarily to me, but to people in general. Um, and this has happened to me once. Um, someone decided that, because my nerve burning, it started in my spine and it started to spread. And I got some tests, and they were not the same way that person got done. And that person had something that she thought I had. And she said, hey, you know, you don't have this unless it goes internal. And apparently she was quote-unquote testing me. I don't fully understand. And mine went internal. So I started freaking out because I didn't want that. And uh, she had CRPS, which is congenital regional pain syndrome. And... We don't think I have it. We never thought I had it. Um, again, we don't know why I have nerve burning. No one has fully looked into it. Um, I have had a nerve conduction study, but that was mainly on my leg. Um, but, yeah, like I said, just because someone does have the same symptoms or... The reason that she thought that I wasn't being truthful is because of the study I got was not the same to hers. Like, I only got it on my leg... 
and she said that that's not how it went. Well, that's what it went for me because they mainly wanted to see the paralyzation of my leg. So, again, like I said, if it's not, you know, don't automatically start pointing fingers. Um, especially since I had, you know, I have friends and family, people that know me personally on all of my social, me social media accounts. And mainly if I post about my illnesses, it's to update because I get like 10 messages a day asking if I'm okay. So it's just easier to do it that way because most of the time I forget to let people know. Um, uh, that's all the questions. If you have any more or any video ideas, please comment down below. I would love to do them. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is a 15-minute a video, but I hope it was very insightful, and I hope that last one helped. Um, but yeah. Um, I love you guys. I uh, hope you are having an okay day. Um, and yeah. Bye, guys. Hopefully see you in a week or two.